Hey there, and welcome to Skin Retouching Section 4. In this section, we're going to be covering frequency separation. We've got a couple of actions for you to load up, and uh, we're going to show you how, how frequency separation works. All right, the first thing we're going to do is load our actions. So if you don't see your actions dialog, just go to Window, and then down here to Actions. There we go. Now we have our actions. We're going to go ahead and load the actions that are included with this tutorial. So I'm going to click on this menu item right here. It looks like three lines with a down arrow. And we're going to go down to where it says load actions. OK, now what we have to do is go into our section one, getting started actions. And we're going to go to flurn retouching.atn. And let's hit open there. OK, now it loads our flurn retouching actions. You can see we have flurn dodgenberg darks, flurn dodgenberg lights, frequency separation 8-bit and 16-bit. Now, before you do your frequency separation, just make sure you're in the right mode. So go to image, down to mode. We are in 8 bits per channel right now, so I'll do the frequency separation 8-bit. If it says 16-bit, then do the one that says 16-bit. All right. Action makes things very easy to use. Basically, just click on this action and hit play. It's going to do a bunch of different things in the background and says, time to blur skin texture. Adjust this radius until you can't see any skin texture. So we'll hit continue there, and that looks pretty good. I can't really see the skin texture. Let's move that up just a little bit. There we go. Skin texture pretty much gone. So now we're going to hit enter. All right, and the action's done. Now the skin texture and color are on different layers. To work on skin texture, choose Flurn Frequency Separation High Frequency and use the Clone Stamp or the Healing Brush tool. To work on the skin color, choose Flurn Frequency Separation Low Frequency and use the Clone Stamp Healing Brush or Brush Tool. All right, so let's hit continue there. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about what happened there. Well, let's go ahead and open up our group and we have two layers. This first layer is basically just a blurred version of our image. Now the second layer is set to linear light. Let's just put it back to normal so you can see what it looks like. It's basically the equivalent of a high pass frequency layer that captures all the texture in the image. So this is where the texture is and this is where the color is. So without the texture, you can see we just have a blurred image like this. So we set this from normal down to linear light and there we go. So turning this action on and off, or these, this group rather, you shouldn't see any change. You should basically get the exact same thing you had before, but now we have our texture and our color separated by different layers. Okay, so we just did frequency separation, guys. Congratulations, you did it. Um, now what we need to do is start working on our different layers to get our blemishes gone. Now, frequency separation is not for things like, you know, tiny little pimples on the nose and things like that. That's where like the removing blemishes, that's section two guys. So frequency separation is like general skin smoothing, like larger scale stuff. And there's a really easy way to use it. And I'm going to show you that easy way. All right. So we're going to select our LF low frequency layer. And I want to create a lasso selection to a lasso selection because we're going to select areas and then blur them. So I'm going to go ahead and make a selection there. Now I want this edge of my selection to be feathered. I don't want it to be a hard edge. So with my selection active, I'm going to hit Q for quick mask. You can also hit this button right down here. Okay. Q for quick mask. This just basically gives you a visual of what's going on with your selection. So you can see my selection right now has a really hard edge. All right. So let's go ahead and bring our feathering up a little bit. We'll create a new selection and then hit Q again. You can see the edge is a little bit softer, but still not where we want it. So bring it up a little bit more. The edge is getting softer, bring it up even more, softer edge, and we'll bring it up even more. All right, there we go. That edge is nice and soft. So we're ready to start working. Okay, now basically what we're going to do is select out an area of our image, just like that looks great. And on our low frequency layer, we're going to run a blur. We're going to do a Gaussian blur. So you can go to filter, down here to blur, and over to Gaussian blur. All right. I set up a keyboard shortcut for this, by the way, which makes things much easier. Let me show you how to do that real quick. We're going to go to edit and then down to keyboard shortcuts. Okay. Here are all of our keyboard shortcuts. If you ever want to find one, this is where they're located. All right. So let's go to filter to blur. And over here where it says Gaussian blur, I'm going to click here and hold down shift option command and hit G. 
and that's going to create a keyboard shortcut for the Gaussian blur option shift command G. All right, so now you guys can create your own. So as I hit that keyboard shortcut, now I've got a blur. Now what I want to do is blur this layer as much as I possibly can without it looking horrible. Like that's obviously way too much. All right, something like that it's starting to look pretty good. So I want to basically blur all these different areas of skin together to create a more uniform skin tone throughout my image. But because the texture is on a different layer, although I'm blurring skin, it does not affect my skin texture because it's on a different layer. All right, let's go ahead and do another section. So this is like this little blemish here right there. We can run our Gaussian blur. There we go. And it just kind of like fades everything together really nicely. So there's the before and the after. All right, frequency separation can be really, really simple. All right, and this is my favorite way to do it. So we just select out different areas and sometimes like the forehead doesn't need so much of a blur, right? The forehead looks a little bit better with a little bit less blur. So that's why we're doing sections here instead of just like one big blur that hits everything on our image, right? Um, different sections allow us to pinpoint different areas of the image and apply different amounts of blur. There we go. So basically, I wanna run this on pretty much the majority of the face. It's just gonna make everything look really nice and uniform. All right, there we go. And any areas where we have harsh transitions, we can smooth those out. All right, there we go. We'll even smooth that out. All right, and this is frequency separation, guys. We made it super easy by adding an action. So <laughs> you're like, whoa, I always thought it would be harder than that. Um, the action makes it a lot easier. Does most of the work for you, which is really nice. Why would you do the work when someone, <laughs> when the computer can do it for you? All right, there we go. Now, if you notice the skin's looking a little bit plasticky, um, that's just bound to happen when you start blurring all the skin together. We still see texture, but the skin itself is looking a little bit uh, plasticky. So in just a little bit, we're gonna be lowering the opacity of the entire layer. And it's gonna help out with that. All right, let's just blur this a little bit more. All right, looking good. See all this area down here? All right, we're gonna make a big sample of this area here. Run a blur. And there we go. It should even keep things like hair intact, which is nice. Because the hair counts as texture, which is, again, on a different layer. All right, there we go, almost done. We're gonna run it, why not? We'll just run it on this mustache right over here. All right, and keep in mind guys, you can always layer mask this stuff. You're never like set, right? So if there's like one little area where you're like, oh, I don't know if I like that, you know, it's not, <laughs> no reason to freak out. You can always just like take care of one little area at a time. All right, looking good. Yeah, and I would say for the most part, we're pretty much ready to go. All right, you can even do this on like shirts and things like that if you want to do, you know, let's just do a large area of the shirt. That was a little bit too much blur. All right, big area of the shirt, we'll just do a little bit less of a blur. There we go, very nice. Okay, so now we have a lot of like really nicely blurred together skin <laughs> on our subject's face. Now it's definitely getting to the point where it's looking a bit plasticky, so I don't recommend stopping here. Like if, you, if you're looking at your image and thinking this is, doesn't look good, then keep doing things until it does. Um, let's go just a little bit more. 
I want to really smooth out a lot of these transitions. There we go, and there we go. Okay, so our skin does look a little bit plasticky right now. Let's just turn this off and on. You can see how much of these tiny blemishes it really did remove. So my recommendation now, after getting everything in place, is to go ahead and lower your opacity a little bit of the entire group. And as you do that, you should reach a point where you have a nice mix between the before and the after. So all these little details and things like that should start to disappear without your skin looking too plasticky. And somewhere between like 50 and 70% is probably about where you want it. All right, now the skin looks great. Let's go ahead and turn this layer off and back on. It just takes care of all these like little areas of like dark and light and all these little transitions and basically makes things a lot more smooth. Now keep in mind, I have done absolutely no work on this image when it comes to like the healing brush tool or the clone stamp tool or anything like that. But just the running of frequency separation does a really great job at smoothing this skin out, especially because we've lowered the opacity on that layer. All right, guys, and that's frequency separation. If you guys are working with a 16-bit image, it's the exact same thing. Just be sure to use the action that says 16-bit instead of the action that says 8-bit. All right, we're going to do one more thing. Just make this invisible so we can show you guys how this works. One more thing. All right, let's hit continue. Um, that looks pretty good there. We're going to run the action. Basically, we're just running the action again. Now, also, you have your texture here, right? And you have your base image here. This is one of those things where you can definitely apply. All right. You can apply things in between these two layers as well, if you'd like. So if I wanted to create a new layer in between these, for instance, and grab my brush tool and kind of paint around, I can start to paint skin texture around this image and it's going to be between my two layers which is going to allow me to still have skin texture over top of wherever I paint. All right, we're not going to get too into this because that's actually our next section which is called the sample and paint technique. Just letting you know you can use the sample and paint technique combined with the high frequency technique to get some really really nice results. All right so just kind of showing you guys how that works there. Here's the before and the after with that. All right, cool. Let's go ahead and delete that and we're good to go. All right, guys, thanks for watching Frequency Separation.